we have a visiting angel in the house. Kelly Chambers is an excellent role model to her staff and caregivers at Visiting Angels, showing what is possible to achieve when you work hard, care big, and have vision. She cares about developing staff members' skills and makes it a priority to ensure that staff and caregivers know they are appreciated by giving them small tokens of appreciation, such as giving lip balm that reads, you're the bomb, and lifesavers that are marked, you're a lifesaver. As a house representative, she works tirelessly for her constituents. She listens to business owners, struggling parents who need childcare, healthcare workers, hospitals, and anyone who needs help. Kelly has done everything in her power to connect people in the community with resources to help them and solve problems as they arise. Whether it's a CPAP machine needed from a loss in the Sumner fires or lobbying for restaurants to ease compliance and fees with the Liquor Control Board, Kelly will flex her Rolodex to bring the right people together to solve problems. Representative Chambers is an incredible ally to the Chamber of Commerce and the business community. She volunteers her time, donates money, and is willing to stick her neck on the line to fight for small business. She and the legislators in the 25th District never stop pushing back on some of the unfair biases towards small businesses of the COVID restrictions as the pandemic surely tried to cripple our economy. We are fortunate to have this angel in our court. Let's visit with House Representative Kelly Chambers and Visiting Angels. One of those things that as a chamber, we kind of are just in this really fortunate position that we get a lot of phone calls and a lot of requests. Fortunately, we're very resourceful. Um, but this week, something occurred that really made me feel like we were doing pretty good. Uh, we had a phone call from someone who did lose their home in the fire, the Sumner fires. And that's n never news you like to hear, and it sounds like they're being taken care of and they're hooked up with Red Cross and have an RV to live in in the meantime. But something as simple as a CPAP machine um, that they had just lost in the fire, they were not able to replace through their insurance company because they only give you one every eight years. And so I started calling people. And I called someone who has become a very near and dear friend to me and who is such an incredible ally to this community, so, our House Representative Kelly Chambers. And it was pretty cool. Um, she, got, she got on it. She said, well, who's the insurance company? I'm gonna call that lobbyist and we're gonna figure out how to get their insurance to pay for it. And she did, and she did, so. My name is Kelly Chambers. I'm a state representative and I represent the 25th Legislative District in the Washington State House of Representatives. I'm also um, a small business owner and a member of the Chamber. I also own Visiting Angels Home Care Agencies. I've owned and operated them for 18 years, taking care of seniors and disabled people who need extra care to stay independent in their homes. When COVID first happened a year ago, we saw that the people that were most affected were older adults that were seniors uh, in nursing homes that had compromised uh, health issues to begin with. So that's been a population that's been the most vulnerable to COVID because they're older and they tend to have other health issues that makes them particularly vulnerable to the effects of COVID. My office has been able to help hundreds of people that needed assistance with collecting their unemployment benefits and you know this hasn't hit everybody evenly there are many people that were able to continue working but for those people that their their jobs were shut down and they they couldn't continue to make a living and and provide for their families you know i feel sort of called to um, be an advocate for them and help them access the benefits that they paid into. In addition to the stuff that we already know, like masking up, washing your hands, whether you like COVID or not, whether you're in business or not, um, this has impacted your life. And so I think just reaching out to, to your friends and family and neighbors and you know, seeing if they need anything, showing them that you care, and just being a sounding board to, to find out what somebody needs. I feel like crying okay <laughs> well if, if, if it's any surprise to anyone here the, the reason I'm so passionate about small business and smart, supporting small business owners is because I'm a small business owner and you know I've ran my businesses for 18 years and we didn't start out a big um, rec recognizable name um, our, our first office in Tacoma was over on Proctor and there's a there's a big new um, condo building there now but it was a tiny little 
400 square foot office and we couldn't even afford desks. Um, I started my business with my mom and um, we went to Ikea and we bought two shelves and we bought some plywood and we painted the plywood black and we screwed these legs on it because we couldn't even afford to buy a desk. And then we bought these two little chairs at a yard sale and covered them in silk. And that was our first visiting angel office. And, you know, I just, I tell you that to let you know that we had humble beginnings and I, um, you should come up here. I start, I started my business. <laughs> I started my business with my mom, and my mom really is, is the heart of what we do, and she never comes to events like this because she doesn't want to be the face of our company, but she is the heart of our company, and if you ever want somebody to care for your mom or your dad or your grandma, um, that's the person that's behind this, and, and I have the honor of being able to go out and represent our, our company and our caregivers and our business, and you know, throughout 2020, you hear this, this new word of essential workers, and what does that mean? You're essential, you're not, yada, yada. Um, our caregivers are essential. We've been essential since day one. My caregivers have been on the front line, and they are never the ones that get any recognition for what they do. But our clients are the people that are in the last years and months and days of their lives. And unfortunately, they pass away. And we've told our caregivers all along this, you know, last 18 years, the best way that you can take care of our clients is to, is, you know, provide them great care. That's how you ensure your job security is to make sure that they're well fed and they're well taken care of. And, and that's the best thing that we can do for our customers because they're not going to be here very long. And, you know, COVID is very scary and the, and the clientele that we take care of are the most vulnerable population to COVID. And, and they are the most at risk. And our caregivers, because they go from home to home to home, have, have the greater risk of, of transmitting COVID. So we've been as proactive, we can, as proactive as we can possibly be in protecting our clients and protecting our caregivers. And in the beginning, um, you know, we normally stock PPE. We stock masks and gloves for our staff. But when all that disappeared and the shelves were empty, you know, it was our staff that was there sewing masks and trying to provide whatever um, protections we could to our, to our clients. And, um, <laughs> you know, in the beginning, beginning we, we don't just provide care in somebody's home. We provide care in facilities. And, and we, had, we had staff in facilities that were wearing garbage bags because we couldn't get plastic gowns to protect our workers and our clients. And when we talk about, you know, essential workers and frontline workers, you see police and fire and you see people that work at hospitals and wear scrubs every day, but you never see a caregiver. And, and they are just the, the, the hardest working people um, <laughs> on the planet as far as I'm concerned. So I just say if you're gonna, if you're gonna thank an essential worker, you know, find a caregiver because they are the least likely people that you ever come across to be thanked, but they're the hardest working people that provide the most difficult care. And if you want somebody at the end of your grandma's life to be with them, it's gonna be one of our angels. So thank you for, for honoring them and visiting angels and, and all that we do.